What's up gamers? It's above and in today's video we'll be covering my top weapons in each slot for the upcoming raid race on Saturday March 5th. The weapons on this list are here for a reason. They offer unique utility, add clear, or are simply some of the best weapons in their slot hands down. And to be honest, this list was incredibly difficult to put together because there are so many amazing options at our disposal. We're more powerful than we've ever been. So take this list with a grain of salt and feel free to substitute weapons that better fit your playstyle wherever you deem necessary. If you enjoyed today's video, a like and subscription would be greatly appreciated. Now let's get into it. Starting things off in the kinetic slot, we have one of, if not the best, primary kinetic weapon in the entire game in the Time Lost Fatebringer. Now, this thing is an absolute monster in endgame PvE content because explosive payload scales extremely well. It also has no damage drop off, which makes this thing an absolute beast. Another positive to take into account is the fact that when you get one of these to drop, it'll drop with explosive payload and firefly no matter what, so you can't really get a bad roll of this weapon, though I would recommend Explosive Payload and Frenzy for underleveled content. It kind of eliminates the need to run a hand cannon loader mod, which is really nice, and it gives you double damage perks, which makes this thing hit like an absolute truck, even in things like GMs and Day 1 raids. I highly recommend a Time Loss Fatebringer if you can get your hands on one. If not, feel free to run the normal version of Vault of Glass. You can pick up a Fatebringer there as well. Next up, we have the Wither Horde. Now, this thing has become extremely popular inside of PvE, especially after the Anarchy nerf. This was introduced during Season of Arrivals and can be acquired through the exotic monument in the helm. This weapon is known for Primeval's Torment, where projectiles fired by this weapon blight the target or nearby area on impact, which is a fancy way of saying you can basically put a pool of damage down on a doorway or a spawn point, which allows you to use your primary and heavy weapons to clear other portions of an encounter this thing is unrivaled in terms of ad control and will absolutely be a workhorse for you on day one it's something that i'm going to rely on heavily in the brand new raid so i highly recommend wither horde if you have it if you don't but you're playing the witch queen dlc the dead messenger in the energy slot is a good replacement but if you guys have this weapon definitely use it next up we have the heritage this weapon used to dominate during the anarchy double slugging meta and since it's nerfed to not only slugs but also also the fix to hot swapping. It hasn't seen as much usage, but it can still be a really viable option if you guys need a quick burst damage weapon to help you take down majors at a close range. So if we have an encounter where, you know, there's majors that are rushing you, it's very much run and gun. This is a great option to pair with something like the brand new funnel web SMG. There's nothing really better as a special weapon, especially for a run and gun setup. I'll definitely have it in my back pocket on day one. The next weapon on this list has a Emerged as a fan favorite with the launch of Witch Queen in the Osteo Striga. This is a brand new exotic SMG that was included with the deluxe edition of Witch Queen, craftable in the Enclave on Mars. Now, unfortunately, if you don't have the deluxe edition, this is not available to all players at the moment, but it is so strong that I had to mention it regardless. Its intrinsic trait is Screaming Swarm, which fires a stream of sentient toxic projectiles that track targeted enemies, and the Osteostriga Catalyst allows poison final blows to not only return ammo to the magazine, but it overflows the magazine. I've seen all the way up to 120 rounds in this thing which makes it absolutely insane to pair with something like devour especially when the poison starts to spread this is a top tier option and even though it's a 600 rpm smg which isn't the best archetype the poison damage is actually insane for dps on things like majors so this is a top tier primary and something i'll definitely be bringing into the day one raid next up we have the arbalist a weapon that became extremely meta during the 30th anniversary dlc now this exotic linear fusion became popular because it not only received its catalyst, it also received a rework on how the anti-barrier functionality of this weapon works. The intrinsic trait for this weapon is Compounding Force that fires slugs that cause massive damage to combatant shields. Now, prior to the 30th anniversary update, this didn't really work all that well on all shield types, especially on things like match game and underleveled content, but now it'll pretty much one hit any shield in the game and it gives itself Disruption Break, which 
which is an insane perk because since this weapon is in the kinetic slot, it not only breaks a shield, it gives itself a 50% damage bonus when you do so. And with the catalyst giving it Genesis, it will automatically top off the magazine every time you break a shield, which means if you're doing what this weapon does best, you're not only giving your teammates a kinetic weapon bonus and yourself a kinetic weapon bonus, you're also just filling the magazine constantly, which allows you to be an absolute menace. So I highly recommend this weapon for utility with both anti-barrier and just giving your team a free debuff if you need it. Our next weapon can actually be acquired through the new light quest in the Cosmodrome in the Night Watch. Now this scout has remained extremely popular, not only because of its availability, but also because this thing rolls with outstanding perks. First up, we have Outlaw, Rapid Hit, and Overflow, which comes on the curated version of this gun in column three. All fantastic perks for a scout, especially something that fires at 200 rounds per minute. Your god roll is probably going to be Rapid Hit because you're gonna have a snappy reload when you're hitting precision crits over and over and over again. And the only perk I'm gonna recommend in the final slot is Explosive Payload. This is a perk that scales so well in underleveled content. As I mentioned with the Fatebringer, this will just make this thing an absolute beast with not only anti-barrier scout, but also just no damage fall off inside of PVE. It works against things that don't take crit damage, such as oracles in the Vault of Glass or fuses in DSC. This is something that can be used pretty much anywhere and its utility is unrivaled in terms of a primary weapon. The 200 RPM archetype paired with the fact that it's a lightweight is the perfect combination of mobility, damage, and also rate of fire. So this thing's DPS for a primary weapon is extremely good. I highly recommend picking up one of these if you haven't already. The next weapon on our list is actually my personal favorite in the entire game in Izanagi's Burden. Now, this sniper rifle may not get used as much now that hot swapping has been nerfed, which means you can't hot swap it with things like GLs and rockets, but it's still incredible for single target damage, especially when you pair it on your team with a divinity. The intrinsic trait on this weapon is Honed Edge, where you can actually hold reload to consume ammo in the magazine and load one overpowered bullet. So basically you have a Honed Edge times four that just does insane burst damage on targets, which means you're one hitting yellow bars and you can absolutely run over champions when you pair this thing with a divinity so i highly recommend bringing this into the day one raid if there are a lot of majors roaming around this is going to be a great option you can even pair it with something like a lasting impression rocket if you're looking to swap between the two the great thing about this weapon is it does so much burst damage for just a special that it leaves your heavy slot open for either ad clear or additional damage making you extremely efficient for dps in any raid setting that you're going to be in next up we have the ignition code this weapon was introduced during Season of the Splicer and was the first breech loading grenade launcher to introduce slide shot into the perk pool, which made this an absolute game changer. You can see here that I have the ability to swap between blinding nades and spike grenades, but I use blinding utility in day one raid environments because it allows you to blind and suppress enemies while you try and figure out mechanics, learn brand new landscapes of raid encounters. It's something that will help keep you guys alive while you problem solve new stuff. So blinding grenades are a top tier utility. If you guys don't use them, start using them. And slide shot allows you to get this utility out more often than ever before. If you guys don't have an ignition code because this actually isn't acquirable at the helm any longer, they actually took it out of the umbral engrams with the changeover to the witch queen DLC. Compare this with something like the pardon our dust that can be acquired from Xur within the dares of eternity activity. It does the same job. It just doesn't have the slide shot perk that makes ignition code so unique, but the blinding utility is the same. Highly recommend recommend bringing at least one of these into the raid on day one. The next weapon on our list is actually one of Destiny's all-time fan favorites in Outbreak Perfected. And this weapon has become a monster because the intrinsic trait, the corruption spreads, gives this weapon the ability to create nanite swarms on precision hits and kills. And those nanite swarms also benefit from the 40% buff, which means in terms of AOE ad clear, especially a weapon that's gonna be useful against unstoppable champions with the artifact mod this season, we don't know what we're gonna face in the raid. So this thing will not only give you unstop utility, it'll give you top tier ad clear as well. And exotic primaries spawn more heavy bricks than any other other weapon type, this thing will be a beast on day one. Next up, we have a long range option and arguably the best endgame sniper in all of Destiny 2 in the succession. 
Now, this sniper drops from the Deepstone Crypt Raid. You guys can swap this with any kinetic sniper of your choosing, but I think it's fair to say that the Succession is the current king of snipers in terms of PvE, especially in the high tier endgame. And the Succession in particular is fantastic because of the reconstruction trait. It overflows the magazine and it's a 72 RPM that hits extremely hard, even in underleveled content. You pair this with Vorpal, you're doing more damage to champions, Hive Guardians, bosses. It's just an overall amazing weapon. I highly recommend using this if you have it at your disposal, but if not, use any other kinetic sniper as well. Moving on to our energy weapons, the first I want to talk about is actually the Salvager's Salvo. This thing was introduced in Season of the Chosen and has been an absolute monster for ad clear over the last year. This weapon is so hot in fact that Bungie actually touched on it in patch notes leading up to Witch Queen, basically stating that it's the strongest ritual weapon that they've ever had, even competing with some of the pinnacle weapons that they no longer make for this game because of the perk chain reaction that they put on a breach loading grenade launcher. Now this perk allows each final blow to create an elemental explosion which chains damage between enemies causing more explosions and you pair this with the fact that you have ambitious assassin you can get two in the breach loading magazine which means you can shoot two GLs back to back making chain reaction even crazier and continuously chaining this perk no pun intended over and over and over again and with spike grenades it just makes makes this thing an absolute beast even in underleveled content and the cool thing is you can actually even run demolitionist on this and feed your grenade energy i think it's eight kills total to get your grenade back in full which with void 3.0 is going to be stronger than ever before so the flexibility and overall ad clear ability on this weapon is top tier definitely bring it into the day one raid the next weapon on this list is one that is brand new with the witch queen dlc and has become highly popular drawing comparisons to the recluse the funnel web. Now this SMG rolls with some incredible perks, most notably killing wind, perpetual motion, subsistence, and pulse monitor in column three, and frenzy in column four. Now with this thing fully spun up, it is absolutely ridiculous. It's a 900 RPM SMG just like Recluse. It's void just like Recluse. And when you pair this with volatile rounds, the ad clear on this thing becomes absolutely ridiculous. Up there with some of the best exotic SMGs in the game. If you guys don't have one, I definitely recommend farming one out. This gun is absolutely insane for ad clear. The next weapon on this list is actually one of my personal favorites, and that is the Vouch Save. This is a 200 RPM scout rifle that is the same archetype as the Night Watch and rolls with similar perks to the Night Watch as well. It comes with fantastic perks in column three with the likes of Surplus, Rapid Hit, and Fourth Times the Charm, and rolls with things like Vorpal and Explosive Payload in column four, making this thing an absolute beast even in underleveled content. The Anti-Barrier Scout, both Vorpal and explosive payload are going to do you wonders, making those five or six taps to break a shield into a three or four tap, allowing you to deal with champions faster. And explosive payload is great everywhere because it has no damage drop off and allows you to deal with enemies easily, even in underleveled content. This thing can be acquired from any drop source in the Dreaming City and can even be acquired in the helm with the new Umbral Overhaul, allowing you to get one of these relatively easily, even though it can't be focused, you have much better odds than ever before. Our next weapon is actually one that's brand new with the Witch Queen DLC. Brought to us via the Vox Obscura mission, we have the Dead Messenger. Its intrinsic trait, Trinary Vision, gives its projectile that creates the waveframe a three times wider radius than any other waveframe we've had in the game before, making it much more viable for clearing large ad spawns. And the other trait it has is the Fundamentals, which allows you to hold, reload, and cycle between every single element type, which makes this thing a monster for breaking all shield types and a monster for ad clear. This thing is absolutely insane. And when it's on void, it can take advantage of volatile rounds as well, making it even more of a beast. Definitely use this if you're a fan of waveframe grenade launchers. Next up, we have a weapon that was introduced with the Black Armory, the Le Monarch Exotic Bow. Now this thing is void and can also take advantage of volatile rounds. And I know you guys are probably sick of hearing that at this point, but this one is worth noting because the intrinsic trait, Poison Arrows, allows arrows fired quickly after a full draw to become poison arrows. And when you hit precisions, that poison will spread amongst enemies in a group, which means the volatile round spread, which means this thing has become 
an absolute beast for ad clear. And on top of this, the exotic catalyst was just introduced to the game. Giving this weapon unrelenting, we're rapidly defeating targets, triggers health regen. So the combination of this catalyst and its interactions with volatile flow, it's just a must use in a day one raid setting. It's going to keep you healed. It's going to add clear for you and bows offer anti-barrier abilities as well. So overall, it's just too good to pass up on. I can't mention exotic bows without bringing up Tiku's Divination. This is a bow that was introduced during Season of the Chosen, and it's become a fan favorite because of its Sacred Flame perk. This intrinsic trait states that hip-firing this weapon fires multiple tracking projectiles. Targets marked by these projectiles explode upon death or when struck by another Sacred Flame's explosion. The cool thing is that you can prime targets for your teammates, so this is even better in a day one raid setting because you guys are gonna be team shotting these hard hitting enemies. And on top of it, the explosive damage does extremely well in under leveled content. On top of the fact that both La Monarch and Tikus received a 40% buff, it goes so hard in end game content. I can't recommend it enough. Both of these bows are a must have in a day one raid setting. Diving into our last two weapons, both of these are going to fill a support role for your fire team on day one in the raid race. And the first one that we're going to be talking about is the Empty Vessel, or the Truth Teller, really whichever one you guys have a better role of. But these blinding grenade launchers, as I mentioned with the ignition code, are going to be essential for day one success because they not only allow you to delay enemies, they allow you to learn encounters because you're not being shot at nearly as much, which allows you to focus on mechanics instead of dying to ads. I highly recommend either of these blinding GLs. The final weapon I'll be recommending in the energy slot is actually the ultimate support weapon for you and your day one fire team. And though you only need to run one of these, it is a major difference maker in a day one raid environment. Lastly, we have the divinity. This is the ultimate support weapon because it allows your teammates to maximize their damage and also is the most consistent form of overload stun in the entire game. The intrinsic trait judgment states that sustained damage with this weapon envelops the target in a field that weakens and stuns them, which is strong against overload champions. It basically mitigates the need to aim on a boss that moves around like Atheon did on day one. So if you don't want to miss any sniper shots and you want a free 30% debuff, this is the best weapon to run. It'll make your day one experience so much easier. Divinity is an absolute must. Even though it's just one person on your team running it, please do yourself a favor and do not leave this bad boy in the vault. Definitely bring this into day one. Starting us off in the heavy slot, we have arguably the biggest fan favorite weapon in the history of the Destiny franchise, none other than the Galahorn. This thing was not only brought back with a bang, it's arguably better than it was in Destiny 1 because it has more benefits than we've ever seen in a rocket launcher before. Its intrinsic trait is Wolfpack Rounds where rounds fired split into their tracking cluster missiles upon detonation, which was how it was in Destiny 1, but what's different is the fact that Pack Hunter also enables legendary rocket launchers to gain this perk as well, which means you only have to have one Galahorn in your fire team to make all other legendary rockets absolutely insane. This thing is not only great for ad clear, it's also great for burst DPS and will be essential in any day one raid environment. Next up, we have a weapon that will be primarily used for transition zones and jumping puzzles, and that is the other half. Now, this weapon can also be substituted with half truths if you guys haven't gotten a good roll of this one, but you guys get the point. This is going to be essential in any transition encounter or jumping puzzle. Basically, just makes your lives easier. So, if you do miss a jump, you can eager edge back onto the platform. You can also potentially speed run and skip major parts of a jumping puzzle. So, this will be very, very helpful. I'm definitely bringing one in myself. Next up, we have a heavy weapon that's taken the Destiny community by storm, doing crazy burst damage unlike any weapon we've seen before, and that is the Parasite. This gun was brought into the game with the Witch Queen DLC as a secret little exotic mission after you finish the Legendary campaign. What makes this weapon so special is its intrinsic trait, Worms Hunger, that states, this weapon fires hive worms which explode on impact, and the size and damage of this explosion scales with the number of enemies you've defeated just before firing. As we know, day one raids are going to be loaded with ads. We're going to be clearing them like crazy. And when you switch to the parasite after deal
dealing with a wave of ads to engage a champion or major, you're going to one-shot them with this perk, even under level. This thing does a ridiculous amount of damage. People are bringing this into Atrax and one-flooring the boss because of how much burst damage this weapon actually does. The Parasite is insane, and I'm definitely going to have it as back pocket utility on day one. Our next weapon is pretty much the polar opposite to this. It doesn't do DPS, but it is arguably the best ad clear weapon in the game right now, and that is the corrective measure. This can be subbed out for the commemoration if you're a big fan of that machine gun, or the seventh serif saw, it's really totally personal preference. This one comes from the master version of the Vault of Glass, and is an absolute beast with the perks I'll be mentioning today. In the first slot, we have Demolitionist, which feeds your ability energy, again, very strong with Void 3.0. And speaking of Void 3.0, this is a Void weapon, which means it can also take advantage of volatile rounds. Pair this with Firefly, and the ad clear is unlike any thing I've seen before in this game. It is absolutely ridiculous seeing Firefly and Volatile Rounds going hand in hand. It's ridiculous to watch. It's super good. And I even have one for all on this thing, which means when I tag three targets in an underleveled activity, I get a 35% bonus to my weapon damage for free. So it's a little bit different play style, but it's arguably the best perk for any underleveled activity. So if you guys don't have one of these, you guys can go farm Templar, complete the normal version of the raid, and get a demo firefly version of this gun so i highly recommend bringing this one into the raid but if not any other lmg can fill this similar role as well next up we have a weapon that is being brought into the rotation solely for its ability to handle hive guardians the tractor cannon now, with Divinity, you don't really need a debuff, though Tractor Cannon does have the ability to offer this. I'm using this primarily to suppress Hive Guardians if they are in the Day 1 raid. Tractor Cannon's intrinsic trait, Repulsor Force, gives this weapon a powerful impulse that pushes enemies away, suppresses their abilities, and makes them more vulnerable to incoming damage, as I mentioned before. But the big thing here is its suppression ability. We don't know how annoying Hive Guardians can be under contest in a day one raid setting with mechanics. So the less time you're spending dealing with supers, if they do happen to be in the raid, the better off you'll be. Definitely something that you guys should keep in mind heading into the raid race on Saturday. Next up, we have a brand new weapon with the launch of the Witch Queen DLC, and that is the Palmyra. Now, this is a craftable stasis rocket launcher that can come with some incredible perks, including enhanced perks, which we've never actually seen in the game before and has not been available on any of the other weapons I've mentioned thus thus far. In column 3, it can be crafted with enhanced impulse amplifier or enhanced auto loading, both of which have fantastic benefits for DPS. And in column 4, it can be crafted with enhanced explosive light and enhanced lasting impression. Though these mods don't make a massive difference in terms of your DPS, it is arguably the highest base stat rocket we've ever had as a legendary, so definitely one to keep in mind and one that's available to all players because it is craftable. And the other major point of emphasis with this rocket in particular is it works with Supreme Wellmaker and bonuses from Font of Might that are made off of simply dropping a well. If you guys haven't caught that video, I highly recommend watching it heading into the day one raid to maximize your damage, and that video will be linked down in the description below. Our next weapon is one that dominated Season of the Lost due to the Particle Deconstruction Artifact mod, and that is no other than the Sleeper Simulant. Its intrinsic trait, Dorn Roshan, allows this weapon's lasers to overpen trade targets and refract off of surfaces. This isn't really the main selling point of this gun, but can be helpful in certain DPS situations. But the most important part is that this gun just hits extremely hard. It's been buffed several times, so it's near the top of the DPS meta. Definitely one to keep in mind in terms of your heavy arsenal for day one rating. Next up, we have the Xenophage, and this weapon is on the list for one reason and one reason alone, and it's to fill a very specific niche in raid encounters where crit base damage doesn't matter. So I'm thinking fuses in DSC, I'm thinking oracles in the Vault of Glass. You never know when you can need this weapon's utility. It's extremely helpful to have in your back pocket, so definitely bring it into the day one raid race. The final weapon on this list may be slightly controversial because it does come from PvP, but I know that I'll be relying on it in our day one raid, and it's simply too good to pass up, and that weapon is no other than the Reed's Regret. And I know that not everybody has this weapon, but if 
if you do, this thing is going to be essential in the raid race because with Supreme Wellmaker, this is the best heavy weapon in the game for sustained damage, hands down. Reeds also has the ability to roll with triple tap and firing line. Firing line giving you a 20% individual weapon bonus and triple tap refunding ammo to your magazine after you land three precision hits. So pair this with Divinity, as I mentioned earlier, and this becomes easier than ever before. Now, this is acquired from the Trials of Osiris playlist, which I know many of you watching this video do not enjoy playing. So if you guys don't have this weapon, simply swap it out for another linear fusion and it'll do a similar job. I still think linears are in a fantastic spot, even with particle deconstruction out of the game. They give you the flexibility to not only use heavy ammo on majors and champions to give you guys a much easier time dealing with them, but also have a bunch of ammo in reserve for the actual boss DPS phase as well. I highly recommend picking yourself up a linear fusion to take into the day one raid race. And if you have reads, this thing is going to be king. Well, guys, that concludes today's video. If you enjoyed, a like and subscription would be greatly appreciated. If you're looking forward to the raid as much as I am, definitely let me know down in the comments below and sound off on any weapons I may have missed as well. Until next time, guys, I'm above and I'll see you in the next video. Peace!